In March, six months ago, surprising information was received. Israel's northern neighbor was secretly establishing a nuclear facility with North Korea's help. The Sunday Times reported that Mossad head Mayor Dagan presented the information to Prime Minister Olmert. Shortly after, information was transferred to a few leading U.S. administration officials who doubted at first the validity of the information. At the same time, Israel's spy satellites began monitoring facts on the ground in northern Syria. The IDF stepped up its activities in the summer and the Chief of General Staff instructed his officers to prepare for war. While Israel continued to send calming messages to Syria, the army conducted a number of exercises on the ground. Six weeks ago, information received was accepted by those who first doubted it. The American media reported on satellite and aerial shots of the installations in northern Syria. Dramatic shots revealed the North Korean link. The cabinet convened to discuss the Syrian issue. Six meetings were dedicated to it and conducted under heavy secrecy. Israel again tried to transmit calming signals, but the tensions with Syria failed to dissipate. On Monday, September 3rd, a North Korean ship docked in the Tartus Harbor in northern Syria, carrying a load of suspected nuclear equipment. The following day, Tuesday, September 4th, the cabinet convened for a special session and at the end said that it focused on Gaza. That same night, the Sunday Times revealed that the Shaldag commanders secretly took up positions in northern Syria not far from the so-called agricultural facility. On Wednesday, F-15 jets from Squadron 69 armed with heavy bombs took off from the Hatsarim Air Base. Additional F-16 jets accompanied them to provide cover as well as an additional early warning plane. The planes entered Syrian airspace. The Sunday Times reported that the Syria anti-aircraft batteries were silenced at that point, and the Israeli commanders directed their lasers on the targets the jets were to hit. The bombs were dispatched, and the site where the facility once was turned into a large crater. The planes returned home safely, and in the Army's General Staff Headquarters, commanders raised a toast. They had a reason to celebrate.